Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I am your host. I am Clay Douglas. My guest today is Rick Light. Rick uh, is the creator and manager of Well-Regulated American Militias. Now, uh, folks, this is not a militia in itself, but it provides uh, information, coordination, communication for militias. And you've worked uh, to uh, with your own county sheriff to get the militias working with the county sheriffs, which is exactly where they belong. We the the militias. I uh, started the militia in New Mexico in the governor's office, folks. And there was, oh, that wasn't exactly a a, a terrorist operation, there was it, Rick? No, sir, it wasn't. Matter of fact, from the way I understand, Mr. Douglas, you started something pretty good. Uh, there is quite a few uh, militia units working with sheriffs down there. I believe some of our listeners heard of a little story. I can't remember what county it is, but where the federal government was wanting to come in and cut down a bunch of trees or, or do a fire line or something like that. But uh, the sheriff stood up and said no. And the feds says, well, we'll just come and we'll arrest you. And, well, when they came, I guess the sheriff called out on the militia. And when the feds got there, well, they had to deal with the sheriff, the deputies, and the militia. So uh, it's pretty effective, as you can see. Um, you did a, you started a good thing there, Clay, and, and we're glad to see that the New Mexico militias are, well, they're building slowly. But... Uh, We've got some other problems amongst us, which we're going to go into today, so I'm going to kind of let you lead off into that, if you don't mind, Mr. Douglas. Go right ahead, sir. Well, we've got a bad problem in the Patriot community, where, especially on the Internet. Um, you know, the Internet can be a great tool. Uh, reach people clear across the United States, clear across the world. But in the Patriot community, we seem to be just a little too busy trying to, well, fight each other as to focus on getting coordinated, looking professional, uh, uniting in general, and then basically putting things together the way they really should be, which would be much more attractive to the American populace. Uh, people wonder why the American populace kind of holds us back. Well... Anybody that's got common sense that goes out and looks on the internet and they see a bunch of, especially in the militia, they see a bunch of patriots basically fighting with each other instead of focusing on what they should do. And needless to say, a lot of people that want to join aren't going to join that way. So, uh, I guess I, me and Mr. Douglas can go into that a bit this morning. Well, we, I do want to go into that because this kind of thing is happening, and it happens to every patriot. I've been demonized for starting the militia. The ADL, Southern Poverty Law, came after me, listed me in armed and dangerous and false patriots. And they, they would tell you I started the militia. They just didn't tell you that I did it in the governor's office. Governor Gary Johnson made a great choice for president, but they don't want him because, you know, can't control it. Can't control well, Ron, uh, Ron Paul to a certain extent. But the, the thing is, a lot of times these organizations will run somebody in. They did this to the Tri-States Militia. When I showed up at the Tri-States Militia, we were going to put three militias together in Edgewood, New Mexico. I showed up. And the Man that put that together, that started it, met me there and told me I wasn't welcome in this public park. I said, you, you, let's see, you put out a press release, you called for the press, I'm the only one out there in the press that's on your side, why would you not want me here? The answer, very simply, was that he was on the payroll of the FBI for $1,776 a month. And I've told people, you know, anytime you get uh, you you want to join the militia, you can if you if you there's more than ten people in it and you haven't known nine of them uh, your whole life, one of them may be a Fed and they're trying to set you up. This is what happened to to uh, Edgar Steele. This is what's happened to it. They they run people in, and a lot of times the people in the chat rooms that are are 
calling you, uh, uh, you know, calling you names, uh, are 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 they're they're put in to try to make the militias, to make the organization, to make that person or uh, that organization look bad in the public eye. The, the divide and conquer is what they're trying to do to us, isn't it? Well, yes, sir. And that's exactly what goes on. I'm sorry if you've got people in your chat room calling me names, but you know that's the problem with the internet. Is well, people jump to the conclusions of some of the most stupidest rhetoric. I happen to fall under a very heavy attack, which you know, which we successfully fended off. Um, if anybody wants to look at Miss Swan's so-called proof, they'll see that it's basically just twisted rhetoric. It's not got no proof. You know, well, I ask, I ask these people. Back there, even even if we caught an infiltrator amongst us, let's say that I was guilty of of the accusations, Mister Douglas. Do you really think that the feds would stand up and say, "Well, okay, you caught me, Mister Likes an infiltrator"? No, they wouldn't do that. So this is what I'm telling patriots: Why would you even worry about a federal plant? You know, that's just paranoid bullshit. That's what that's, that is. That's, that's, you're not breaking the law, and you're not set up for anybody to come in and break the law. Well, then you're going to be fine. Trust me. They they just can't come in and grab you and do all kinds of stuff. The reason we see a few patriots fall prey to that is well, they allow for the the situation to set up. You know, they'll get like somebody came out to my place for an FTX and started suggesting illegal activities. Of any time, it's like I would tell them, "Hey, see your vehicle. Get in your vehicle and hit the road." Because, well, I work with my sheriffs and my deputies. I happen to have a wonderful sheriff. He's a constitutional sheriff. He's never violated anybody's rights that I've ever seen in seven years. Our deputies are known to be uh, what they're supposed to be to the civilian populace in our area. In other words, the deputies here aren't going to just pull you over, search your car question you uh, a million and one questions and uh, they're basically going to leave you alone. As long as you're not speeding, you know, you're not breaking the law. Okay, let me, um, let me, let me point something out. That this, this, sure. this is exactly what I, what the point I want to get to. Folks, I've been doing this for 20 years. And, and I've gone through the same kind of demonization as, as Rick is going through right now. And that even some of that even came because Southern Poverty Law feeds the FBI and Homeland Security. Well, Mr. Douglas, we got to stop right there a second, and, and this is what I want to address to Patriots. Okay, go right ahead. Um, you know, we complain about the media. We do because they do slanderous. But folks, ask yourself, where do they get the information? You know, some of the information they're getting are from you, you. They look at what you post out there. Then they copy and paste it. And then they make a spectacle out of what you post. you got to be careful. Folks, look, it's great to have uh, freedom of speech, which we should have. We should be able to say anything we want, but we know that that's not the way it is anymore, that our First Amendment rights have been curbed. And that's not right. And I've had a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm just not going to go along with any laws that are bad and stuff. Well, you know what? You just lied right there. Look, if you didn't go along with the bad laws, like all of us have to, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. That's not delusional speaking. That's reality. If we do not obey the bad laws that's right now, we go to where? Jail. Possibly prison. Or, hey, shot, killed. That's happened too. So, you know, hey, folks, let's shake the delusional thinking off that you're not going to obey them bad laws, because you will. You are doing it right now. Every one of us that are alive in America and trying to fight for freedom are having to deal with those bad laws. And are there a lot of them? You bet you there are. And that's why we're all here to the place, to try to figure out, well, how are we going to change this? And it, 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 some of us are even resolved to, well, hey, you know, if it comes down to the punch, We'll do like our founders did. We will do exactly what our founders did. They're not going to take our nation. From I I want to now. point out something. I took an oath over sure. back uh, when I was 17 years old. I took an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I read it. Yes, sir. I did too. I took that same oath, and I met my oath to the letter. Now, now the, the letter. point the point I was going to make, folks. 
with all the demonization, oh, Clay started to murder, oh, Clay writes bad poetry. The uh, FBI listed me in a guide to right-wing extremists. That was put out in uh, every police station in New Mexico. I got a copy, and I made two phone calls. One to the governor, one to the chief of the state police. The governor said, don't worry about it. And I said, well, that's easy for you to say, governor, but, uh, you know, I think somebody's trying to get me killed here. And the next call was to the chief of the state police, and he said, Clay, I've been reading your magazine for 10 years. You don't have anything to work, uh, worry about from me or any of my men. I said, what about the sheriff and that little uh, podunk uh, Socorro in New Mexico? What if they think I'm some kind of dangerous character because of this crap? He said, the governor recalled every one of those booklets from every police department in Texas. I don't think you got anything to worry about. <laughs> and good. and good and job. I I got one year a uh, few couple of years back three years back I got uh, I got in over a million dollars in hot checks. I kept a file on them, and I walked into the FBI office and laid the files down. <laughs> they said, uh, "Gee, there's." Well, first of all, they said, hi, Clay, how are you doing? And and then they said, there's nothing we can do about this. This is those scammers in Nigeria, and we don't have a, we don't have a, a <laughs> we don't have a extradition treaty with Nigeria. I said, oh, you mean they're, they're, they're most, that's the word their Mossad operates out of with the white slavery and all that? Oh, I see, and we don't have a, we don't have a, an extradition treaty with it. Okay. And the point is, I was able to walk out of the FBI office. I've committed no crimes. I'm doing nothing wrong. You know, well, let's see, let's see, you know. In a few states, I might be breaking a law here, but uh, not in Arizona. Well, we have, look, there's not every sheriff out there is bad. Now, no. Do we have bad sheriffs? Yes, we do. We've got some horrendous sheriffs. Look at uh, Duke Nick in Arizona. Look what his SWAT team did to Jose Garina. That's a bad sheriff, folks. It's just too bad, you know, he wasn't held accountable for what his men did to, to Mr. Garina. That's right, and he uh, tried to they, he tried to put the blame uh, to me and uh, Rush, Rush Limbaugh, Michael Savage, anybody else. That didn't quite work out. No, sir, it didn't. You know, Mr. Garina had every right to defend his household. He didn't know who was entering it. That's right. And just because he was holding a shotgun, when they busted the door down, well, they thought that gave them the ultimate authority just to kill that man. And, well, that's not the way it works. Them officers should have been brought up for murder. That's and the militarization. He accountable for letting that go down. He's the sheriff. That's right. And, and the Oath Keepers came here, we marched, uh, and we went to the house, and we paid tribute to his wife, his widow, and, uh, you know, that didn't hit the papers much. No, yeah, well, they didn't do anything about William that Cooper, kind of either. Stuff held back. Um, look, folks, we've got a lot of work to do. Now, some people think that I want to tame the militia down. No, I don't. I want to grow it. I want to grow it in a professional fashion to where... People will look at it and say, you know what? I can join that. I won't be afraid to join that. Uh, yeah. Give you an example before Who, I. Is there somebody else out here? Is there, what, is there somebody else on this call? Yes. Who's this? Uh, this is Paradisian. I'm in California. How'd you get on here? I called in. Well, let him speak. Go let ahead, sir. Go, let all right. this man speak. All right, go ahead, sir. Well, thanks. Yeah, I just uh, been listening to what you guys have been talking about, and uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not up to speed, uh, uh, up to date, maybe, on what's going on in the Patriot movement. So I don't feel qualified to share equal time with you guys or anything. But uh, I know one prominent case, and I really want to know what happened to is what happened to William Cooper. Uh, same place, Arizona, Apache County Sheriff's Department, and some guys just basically came out there and murdered him, it seems to me. And it was the most high profile case ever, and the militia didn't, didn't do anything about it. There was, that, there was nothing we could do. He was set up. Hang on a second, let me see what this is. Yeah, that, 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 that there's really entailed, my friend. Are you um, still there? A lot of study on that. Yeah, uh, that could be a whole entire show in its own right of what happened to Bill Cooper. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you 
I'll give you a little insight. I'll give you a little insight into this. Bill and I were in communication. Whoops, hang on a second. We're 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 off here. Host got disconnected here. I don't know what happened here. Hold on. Uh. All right, I'm trying to get back on here. Just a minute here. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please enter your host pin. When finished, press the pound key. Okay. Technical difficulty. Yeah, yeah, there's technical I'm sorry, but I did not hear you press at least four digits of your pin number. That's good. Alright, let me show you. I'm sorry, but I did not hear you press at least four digits of your PIN number. Our, our menu has recently changed. Please listen carefully to the new prompts before making your selection. To start your show now, press... Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right, we're back. Rig lights are at my guest today, and uh, I, I think that 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 caller was actually on a, another network there. So I don't believe he's with us anymore. But the inside into Bill Cooper, I had a phone that I'd been using for many many years, cell phone, and I was talking to Bill Cooper on it. And we made plans to put uh, his magazine, Veritas, and my magazine together in some form or something. And I was supposed to go see him, and two weeks later, he was set up and shot by police posing as uh, drunk teenagers. When he went out to uh, chase them off, they shot him. Whether it was related to me, I don't know, but uh, people I've had conversations on the phone with before and the so-called accident that I have was all done over cell phones you know some uh, that and Amdocs and Converse were the two companies the NSA got to uh, tap our phones by George Bush. Oh, they still like to do that. Now let me see let me let me play something here for a moment we're talking to, we're talking here about about the uh, attacks on people. Now, now Rick's go undergoing this right now. He's trying. He is working with the uh, with the sheriff. He is working with. Uh, we're not, he's not doing anything wrong. And how would somebody off the street? How could I or or you just jump up on the internet and go? Rick Light and Clay Douglas. They're 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 federal snitches. They're child molesters. Well, you know, that goes along with personal feelings. Either that or look, they're they're put there for the purpose of creating division. Now we've got two types of division out there. We've got the egotistical type that, you know, well, Mr. Light made me mad, so I'm gonna show him. I'm gonna splatter bad information all over the internet and boy, everybody's just gonna believe me. Well, wrong. That doesn't happen. Um, I don't believe I'm suffering from the attack anymore. Uh, I had a show on it. We've got a show on New Colony every Tuesday night I'm on there. It's the news with Minuteman. And uh, we talk about, well, certain things going on within the militia, how to better the militia, things like that. Anything right. that has to do with militia, that's New Colony's night to listen about militia, whether it be good or bad. So... Seeing how these attacks were so orchestrated and uh, so massive, I mean, these people went way out of their way, folks. They uh, tweeted it, they mass emailed it, they did everything. For two weeks this went on, and I'm the type that I don't like to bring internet drama out on the internet, so I stay focused on what I should be doing, even though the attacks went on. 
but it got to a point where we realized it wasn't going to go away. So, everybody uh, finally uh, got to hear Tuesday night the truth. Um, I was helping Mrs. or Mrs. Dyer with Charles Dyer's case. Me and Charles are very good friends. And when you got a good friend, you stand with them. And these people wanted to make my friendship with Charles into much more than, well, what it really was, that I was a federal infiltrator. I was a federal informant. Well, no, folks, look, I'm not going to get a hold of the FBI unless I got to get a hold of the FBI. And then it's not going to be in the fashion that a lot might think. You know, I try to keep away from the FBI the best I can, like y'all do. I don't trust them. I know what they've done in the past. But sometimes when you're in a position like I'm in with Charles or with Ram, because people posting this idiotic rhetoric on there, threatening violence and stuff like that, well, guess what happens? I get visits. I get to visit. Sometimes the person making the comment gets to visit, but I get to visit about, well, Mr. Light, you understand that, you know, that's our job is to monitor the Internet, and if we feel like something could be threatening, well, we're going to go talk to you about it. Now, not that I made any threats that were threatening on there, that they've got a concern with me, but then there's the case of Charles Dyer. Look, folks, Charles' mother sent me down to Fort Bend to make sure her son didn't get killed. And when you go into a hot manhunt like that, guess who you're going to be talking to? You're going to be talking to all kinds of law enforcement officials. That's just the way it is. It's either that or you're going to get your butt shot off. Now, um, I went down to uh, Fort Bend because Charles knows my vehicle well. Some people think I was hunting him. I was just going to get him and make him come in. No. I was going to give my brother an option to come in safely if that's what he wanted to do. That would have been Charles's choice. I wasn't down here hunting him. I can't, couldn't hunt him. There's too many trespassing laws in, in Texas. So that pretty well took that out of the picture. Well, he dogs 818 and Deborah Flynn wanted to make that into a whole lot more than what it was. So we uh, had Mrs. Dyer come on my show and she pretty well set the record straight. And I believe Clay has a recording of Mrs. Dyer and what she said Tuesday night on my show. Let's do that. Uh, let me see here. Let me see what time I've got here. Yeah, I've got, uh, we got, let's play this and then we'll end up this uh, first half and, and do the second half. We noticed it was just about time for Charles' trial that all this stuff would always erupt. Folks, Y'all know it wasn't me, it wasn't Amelia Foxwell, it wasn't Darren Wilburn, it wasn't Nancy, and it wasn't Shane. It was other patriots out there, uh, namely Deborah Swan and EDOS 818, uh, which is also known as C. Medina. Medina. Uh, I believe he had goes by a name of Elijah Medina, too. So, uh, we're going to address these issues tonight, folks. It's not fair when patriots go out and use lies and try to slander prominent patriots in the movement. And we were glad to see that for the majority, knew that this was just complete nonsense, just a complete slander attempt uh, across these people. Look, if Deborah Swan and Egos... Oh, move really your way to... back. Let me get down to the bottom. Okay, go ahead. If you're on here, Mama. If you jump right in here. Now this okay, uh, the, this I've voice got we're hearing. Going on. I'm not sure just exactly what in the background. This voice we're hearing is the mother of Charles Dyer. Is that right, Rick? That's correct. All right, let's uh, listen. Uh, uh, we can't. I can't hear it on this end. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, it's going now. Before, Ms. Dyer. It's gone now. All righty. All I want to do is. <clears throat> Let everybody know, Amy is not going to be on tonight. She is so tired of all of this, she won't have anything to do with anybody. And it's getting to the point where I can't even work. That's what I should be doing right now, trying to make enough money to finish paying for the things that we need for Charles. However, 
my eight and a quarter cents a line is being given up, at least for the little wall. If anybody wants to type for eight and a quarter cents a line, which is 65 characters, go for it. See how much money you make. I have to work hard. Because of all of the stuff that Debbie and E-Dogs, or whatever he calls himself at the moment, have done, it is costing me just about everything I have. It's costing all of us just about everything we have. Yes, ma'am, I she agree. She takes things out of context, takes my emails, talks them up. I did ask her to leave my house before the last trial. I asked her not the house, but the yard. She was in the yard. She was not invited, neither was E-Dogs. Just show up. Told E-Dogs in my house, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, he's a slight bit taller than I am, that I did not appreciate what she had been doing. She could have taken Charles anywhere but Texas, across the state line, but she did anyway. That was not saving his life. She most certainly just took him down there and dropped him off. I'm not sure exactly how that saved his life. There are a lot of places in Oklahoma where there are not a lot of people that she could have taken him to and he would not have been across the state line. But, no. Ma'am, I agree with that. Got to take him across the state line. That's when I called and asked you, Rick, to see what you could find out. See, since you were down in that area, if you could find out exactly where he was. I didn't know who had taken him at the time or how he had gotten anywhere. But I figured if that's where they were looking for him, that's probably about where he was. And I know you got in some real trouble with him. But uh, if well, she was I can't trying really to help, it trouble, but you know, uh, it was Charles. And uh, at your request, Mrs. Dyer, you told me to go get your son and to keep him from exactly getting killed. That's exactly what I did. And you know, by God, I, that's what I was going to do. I am really put out with that. The emails that I have gotten have said that I did not ask her to leave. I just didn't want to talk to her at the moment. That is not true. I did send someone out into the yard to ask her to please leave the property and do not attend the trial. She had apparently, according to Charles, asked him to have the paper of attorney changed from me to her. She has asked me multiple times to fire the attorney and let her handle this case. In the state of Oklahoma, if you try to do things common law, it is called a sham law, and you go to jail. We do have an attorney. We intend to continue using this attorney, and that is where it's going to be. She says that you, Shane, Darren, Amelia, and Nancy have all taken over my mind. You're doing mind control on me. And that I am not doing what I think needs to be done. I'm doing what you think needs to be done. I have a mind of my own, and I will do what I think is right. I am not stupid. I'm just old. I am tired of being treated like an idiot. I do have thoughts. I do have some intelligence. I do weigh some evidence. I come up with what I think is right, and that's the way it's going to be. It is my son. It is not her son. It is not anyone else's son except his dad and I. We have been in with this since the moment he called me from jail and said, Mom, I've been accused of raping my daughter. And my first word was, do what? Because I was in disbelief. No one else we all were has been worried. in this position that I am in at all. I know what has happened. I know what is going on. No one else has been in this house 24-7 from the start of this two and a half years ago 